it's a very uh, good time for MDS studies. I think we are realizing more and more with time that a lot of the advancements in AML and all the revolution with all these new agents coming in, eight drugs approved in the last uh, two or three years, basically. Some of that is finally starting to spill into uh, MDS. And I think one of the interesting agents that uh, is being studied in, in MDS is venetoclast. So your audience might know that um, venetoclast has now been studied in uh, myelodysplastic syndromes, uh, especially with patients with higher risk myelodysplastic syndromes, in both the front line and their lab setting. So uh, the frontline study was presented, in, in, uh, actually both studies were presented in the last American Society of Hematology uh, meeting, and both of them showed promising results. Um, I'm updating the results of the uh, use of venetoclast in the relapse refractory uh, setting. And um, I think the main highlights from this study is that uh, we are, uh, the patients that we studied basically included 44 patients in this phase 1B study who have received a combination of azacitidine and venetoclast. So there was a cohort that received venetoclast as monotherapy, uh, but the activity was not quite uh, promising, so we focused more on the combination with uh, azacitidine with venetoclast. And all of those patients basically were patients who had prior exposure to hypomethylating agents, so they were hypomethylating agent refractory. And um, we did a uh, traditional dose escalation uh, in which the venetoclast was escalated in three cohorts in combination with azacitidine that was given at the standard dose, which is um, 75 milligram per meter square daily for seven days each cycle. And the dose that was selected for the expansion was venetoclast at 400 milligram PO daily given in day one through day 14. So that's different than what's done in AML in which venetoclast is given continuously. In MDS, and that applies also to the frontline study, uh, venetoclast basically is given uh, day one through day 14 to minimize the degree of the cytopenia. I think you have to remember that patients with high risk MDS tend to be older uh, and they do not tolerate myelosuppression uh, as well as patients with uh, AML who on average are around 10 years younger than patients with MDS. The median age of M AML in, in, in the US is 68, while the median age in for MDS is in, in the mid-70s, 76, basically. Uh, so among the 44 patients that we, are, we, we treated with uh, the combination, basically, uh, the combination was well tolerated overall. The adverse events were manageable. Um, mostly they were hematologic or gastrointestinal, and generally they were uh, successfully managed by dose interruptions or um, delaying the doses. Uh, and I think on the efficacy front, uh, and this is, uh, in my view, quite exciting, we observed 41% uh, overall response rate. And again, this is, I think, a very difficult patient population to study in the relapsed refractory high-risk MDS situation. And those were a mix of paro CRs as well as CRs. And uh, the durability of the, I think, the response was quite interesting. The median duration of response was 8.6 months. And the uh, time to response was quite fast. So the median time to the first response was 1.4 months. And those responses were observed across the entire genetic spectrum um, in terms of mutations. As we know, patients with MDS have different types of mutations. So we saw those responses across the entire spectrum. So you have, I think, a high response rate that is durable uh, in many patients and that is rapid to achieve and across the entire genetic uh, spectrum, so in some ways what we call mutation agnostic. Of course, patients who have TB53 mutation uh, did worse than the others, but that applies to any kind of therapy. However, patients who had IDH mutations did uh, better, and all, all of the patients who were on this trial who had IDH mutations responded, which is somewhat similar to what we see in the AML experience. In terms of the survival data, the median overall survival uh, was 12.6 months, and I think, again, that's quite a, an impressive number. It compares very favorably, I think, in my view, to patients who have uh, refractory relapsed MDS that were reported, which is uh, usually have a median survival of, on, have a, on, on a median around six uh, months. And the even free survival, the median was 9.1 months. The 12-month overall survival rate was 66%. So I think all of those data, in, in my view, are quite... Uh, 
interesting. We are now doing additional studies looking at uh, looking at biomarkers for uh, response such as the PCL2 expression and uh, correlation with cytogenetic uh, uh, evaluation at baseline and uh, depth of remission and all of those factors. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to report more on that with subsequent uh, settings, whether in meetings or in, uh, in the publication, primary publication of the study.